Hey everybody, David Evans uh, with TKO Marketing SEO Roadmap. I want to give you a quick video on the soon upcoming release of Google Penguin 2.0. Matt Cutts a few uh, days ago released a video talking about the soon to be released in the next week or so Google Penguin 2.0. This video I want to give you a short rundown of what I think it is, where I think they're going to go and how we can kind of get ready for this um, as internet marketers. Let's take a look at where we are. Um, all of you have been paying attention to the Google Panda, Google Penguin algorithms that were released. And a lot of it had to do with over-optimization, whether it was on-site with content, duplicate content, coding issue, you know, usability issues, that side of it, interlinking, over-optimization of, of links on your website. And then Penguin came along, and there was a little bit of confusion on there of what it actually was. The further time has gone on, we realized that it was pretty much a filter on top of the algorithm. And this just means that Google has a, a, and another filter running to basically look at spammy links and linking concepts to your website in this filter. Now initially it was dealing with malware, it was dealing with um, pornography sites, the, the worst of the worst in linking side of it, spammy concepts. Now with um, the help of a lot of internet marketers with the disavow tool, Google got a massive amount of information of what bad links are or what internet marketers think are bad links. Many of us sent in disavow tools, you know, disavow lists of links saying, hey, get rid of these, I don't want these, they're, they're not valuable. Well, Google's been compiling this information. It knows a lot about links now, linking networks and platforms that it can view and, and look through and say, okay, is this a good link or not? So with Google Penguin 2.0, it goes beyond what the initial filter was. Matt Cutts talks about upstream and downstream. What type of neighborhood are you linking to and what type of neighborhood is linking to you? And in, in talking about a downstream or an upstream, it's not just the initial sites here above you and below you, it's past that. It can get the, a concept to say, how good of a neighborhood are you in? So is this saying, you know, three sites down from you is a malware site or two sites down from you is a malware site and looking at, okay, what type of neighborhood are you in? You know, do you, are you right outside the bad neighborhood? Or are you in a really solid neighborhood? So that's where this concept is going. One of the first things that we saw with Google uh, Penguin was the anchor text concept, over-optimization of anchor text. If you really think about it, how many times do you actually click on a link that's an anchor text? You know, that actually says blue widget and you click on it. Very, very rarely. You may talk, you, know, you may be on your friend's website and they say, hey man, these blue widgets are awesome, go here. And the here is the link or, or that side of it. So very rarely is anchor text used in day-to-day -day life. It's just, it's not a part of the, the interaction, especially online. So Google started putting in filters on over-optimization. Now we've seen a lot of different percentages being thrown around there, anywhere from I've seen 30% anchor text to 70% anchor text. It goes all over the place, you know. But basically anybody that had le less than 30 to 50% anchor text kind of avoided the filter. We don't know where it's going, but that's probably going to be something that Google is going to look at with this Google Penguin 2.0. How does that anchor text fit into that? So if your website has a lot of anchor text links to your site, be careful. Uh, if you didn't get hit the first time, you may get hit the second time that's coming around. Another thought that we saw is the relevancy of the link. Was that link relative to your site? Or was there any relationship between your market and the market of that website? There again, if you think about everyday life, very rarely does a site in, um, let's just take home improvement, link to a, a, a electronic site. It's just, it's totally different markets. So in this, what's the relevancy of your link? How closely relevant are your links to your website. Now, post Penguin 1.0, I've heard a lot of sing and you go across the forums and hear them talking, relevancy be became a hot topic. And I still think this one's gonna be a valid way of, of building links in the future because it does make sense to have a relevant home improvement site, you know, a plumbing site, linking to a home improvement site that's going to make sense moving forward. Um, but looking at the relevancy of your links, if the majority of your links are not relevant, relevant content, relevant domains, all this, then you're going to have an issue. One of the other things that they started popping up, and we've seen this through Open Site Explorer does this, um, they have page authority, domain authority. Looking at the authority of the link. Now that, that is up to speculation. Um, there's a lot of things out there that talk about authority. Is it a high page rank? Is it an age domain? What's the authority of it? But a site that actively has a lot of authority. Those links should be worth more. Um, a lot of people have tried to buy 
authority. They'll try to buy a link or, or something like that to do that. Be careful of that, but getting links that are from authority sites. It's not amount now, it's not so much now about the amount of links. You don't have to have a massive amount of links. If you want to prove that point, just go in the top 10 in Google and look at the linking profiles anymore. It doesn't matter about the total amount of links near as much as the authority and the relevancy of those links. So making sure your links have the proper authority and good authority um, that are linking to you. Uh, something else that just came out, number four here, is the concept of a link graph. A link graph takes the concept of a neighborhood and Google understands that they have a massive amount of processing power to do this, but they can look at a website and see where it's linking and what's linking to it and that whole concept. So if it's an odd link coming out or if all the links are, are bunched towards one website or all the link juice is being pushed out, they can see this with the link graph. And they can say that website right there, the only goal of that website is to pass through authority. You know, there's no real purpose of that website other than to pass page rank, pass authority, all of that right there to another website. When, when Google sees that, they say, well, that, that website has no value. There's no main reason for that website to exist other than to pass through authority. So it's going to devalue the links to that site and that whole linking neighborhood through that link graph. It can tell the structure of that, the support structure around that website, and, and deal with it. Now, um, those of you that are, that are building links on the concept of, of getting a high authority age domain, buying it, building up the authority of it, creating a, a linking substructure underneath it, and pass all that juice over to another website, be careful just because this is going to be a part of this. Google's going to start to devalue websites that have no value except to pass through link authority. Also link trust. What is the trust of that link? Now Moz, uh, Moz puts a Moz trust to it, Moz rank, um, that side of it. But if you really want to study this concept, start Googling the Hilltop algorithm or the Hilltop documents from Google. And this is basically saying that Google understands a page's trust by what is going on with that document. And you know, does this website interact well? Is it, is it getting linked to properly, socially, interaction, page time, uh, bounce rate, all of that? What's the actual value of that document, that page? And uh, I'm not going to go into that a lot, but they have a massive amount of information if you want to study the Hilltop documents that Google has released on the trust of, a, of an actual page of a website. And this is where now we have to start thinking more on the page side of it than just the complete domain. Does that page have value? What is the value of that? Um, another point here, number five, is link velocity. Is your website having highs and lows of link velocity, or is it pretty much just this nice little um, increase? There's probably going to be some sort of throttling with link velocity. Is it a huge spike and then nothing, or what's going on? Google can, can kind of regulate that now and say, okay, anything over you know, 50 links a day or anything over five links a day, whatever your standard um, percentages are, throttle a little bit. It's not normal, it doesn't usually happen, um, and, and look at that. This one is, is up for speculation. I've seen a lot of discussion on that point. Um, it's an unproven point at this time, but it is open for discussion. Another one that's kind of new, um, we've heard this talked about a lot, but we haven't really been able to um, put it into any precise language, and that is social metrics. What is the social metrics of your website? You know, yes, we know with Google+, Plus, we see some activity there, but those of you who have played around with that to try to change or increase or play with rankings based off of social signals, it becomes very hard. The issue is not so much as changing rankings. The issue is what, how does social metrics fit into the trust of the site? Are people sharing it? Are people tweeting it? Are people liking it? That just puts a trust element more than a ranking change. It's a secondary action. The page is trustworthy because it has the right social factors in it, um, and that's coming. The last one I have up here is traffic of links. This is a brand new one. Um, it used to be discussed about a few years, discussed about, I know, a couple years ago. But recently I've been uh, studying a little bit more on this to try to understand how Google's going to start looking at traffic of links. And the concept is, in the, in the everyday life, if a link is on a website, it's specifically there to get a user to click on it and to go someplace else. Whether it's navigation, whether it's an ad, um, whether it's in content, you know, read more here, and it links out. The whole reason for that is to get the user to get more information, to go read more about the topic and do that. Well, that's how typical links are designed to be. 
Now we've always, with SEO, we do it for anchor text and link juice and stuff like that in the past. But Google now has the capability to look how much traffic is coming from your links. So take your 100% of your linking profile, how much traffic comes from that linking profile? If very, very little, what does that tell Google? The only value of that linking platform is link juice. It's not actually traffic or what is adding value to that site. This one kind of scares me if you actually think about it because this is the one that if Google really starts regulating or starts saying, okay, your links need to have traffic through them, it kind of takes the SEO concept out of our hands. You know, we can't really build links for traffic um, unless you do guest blogging and things like that. So this is when Matt Cutts says at the end of the summer that SEO is going to be dead. This is the one that I could look at and say, I could see it on that concept. If they really emphasize this point, a lot of link juice is gone. There's no reason to do link building if it's done for traffic. At that point, it has to be uh, inbound marketing, infographics, the things that it should be doing, the things that we should be doing and are actively doing would be the main reason for this. So this right here is a quick rundown of where I think it's going. Um, I'd love to hear your comments and, and uh, suggestions below this video um, on the different posts that we have this video on. And just, just let us know. Also, if you're interested in, in a Penguin 2.0 audit, we can look at a lot of these things. We have a lot of tools that we can evaluate a website and see how close you are to where we think it, it should be. And it really helps you out to, to better ranking. We are seeing good rankings right now inside of Google. So please leave your comment below. And any questions, let me know. There's a phone number on the website and also the form below. Thank you much.